What is up everybody, Crash here with another TF2 mapping quick tip. Today we're going to show you how to quickly create decals and overlays with transparencies for your map. While doing this, I'm also going to finally create the overlay for the winner of the raffle I held a while back. Sorry this took so long. Uh, this is going to show exactly how I create the graffiti styled overlays on my map Trainsaw Laser. So first we're going to open GIMP. You can use Photoshop if you have it, but personally I just use this. Now what we want to do is set our image size to a power of 2. This means 128 by 128, 256 by 256, 512 by 512, etc, etc. Uh, the higher your resolution, the larger your image will be on the map and the sharper your details will be. You can always scale this to be whatever size you want when it's on there though. Uh, so what you're looking for is a balance between quality and file size. A ton of 2048 by 2048 overlays are going to fatten up your map a whole lot more than the same amount of 128 by 128. For this project, I'm going to use 512 by 512 because there's going to be a full sentence that I need to write out and I need it to be legible. At this point, you can create whatever you want, a little doodle or just import an image that you wanted to place on your map. Uh, this is what I needed to make for my contest winner, Old Man Jenkins from the Fire Powered Community. He won a drawing I held a while back, the prize of which is getting a sentence he chose along with his name on my joke maps, Trainsaw Laser and Wub Wub Wub. So here's a bit of a time lapse of me whipping that together. Um, I've always done the graffiti overlays on Trainsaw using my mouse and taking it one letter at a time, making it look like the scratchings of an insane person. It sort of is. It's also been an ongoing tradition for me to do these while slightly intoxicated. So when I recorded this part of the video, I was enjoying a glass of Crown Royal Apple chilled with some classy ass whiskey stones. Delicious! So once we have our image finalized, we need to save it as a TGA file. I'm going to be saving it as tslgraffiti39.tga. Now the next step is that we need to convert this TGA into a Valve Texture Format file, or a VTF. We use a program called VTF Edit. Check the description for a link to download it. So we open the program, we go to File, Import, and select the TGA that you just created. Now I usually just leave the settings to default in the option window that pops up. Uh, hit OK. And now you'll see a preview of your image with a black background where the transparency is. You need to click File, Save As, and type in your image name, omitting the extension, and hit Save. Now that created your VTF file, so you need to grab that, copy it, and put it in your Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Team Fortress 2, TF, Custom, and create a new folder here dedicated to your custom content. I personally just use Crash for all mine. Now inside of that, you need to create a Materials folder, and inside of that folder, you need to create another folder using your custom name. And now paste your newly created VTF in this folder. Now while we have our material created in place, we're not quite done yet. Every material in the source engine needs a Valve material type or VMT file created for it to tell the game how to interpret it. In the description below you'll find a basic VMT code that I use for all my overlays. Copy all of this and paste it in a blank text file. Now you need to edit the value next to base texture so it directs to your new VTF created. So for our example here, we'll put in crash slash TSL Graffiti 39 and now save this with the same name as a VMT. You might need to turn visible file extensions on in Windows if you can't see them. So now that that's saved, we can open up Hammer, load up the map we want to place our new overlay in, Use the material browser to search for our overlay, select it, and place it with the overlay tool. And if it needs to be scaled at all, we can do so right now. And that's it! There are a lot of other options for your materials, and I highly suggest looking at into what each one of these VMT parameters are doing so you can better be prepared in the future for anything else that you want to create. A link to all of that will be in the description below as well. So thanks for watching. If this quick tip helped you out, be sure to subscribe to catch all future videos.